Shaking. Nothing? Nothing? You know that you're going to make that interception. You're on the ground. The ball just falls right in your hands. What were you thinking at that point? Well, when I started, when I fell, run it back. When I broke to the ball, I saw the ball. I saw it pop up in the air. I went to cut back for it, and I fell. Really unathletic-like. And I didn't keep, I didn't take my eye off of it. I just kept watching. I'm like, there's no shot that's going to fall right in my hands. I'm watching it. I'm like, it's definitely going to fall right here. Stick my hands out, pops me in the helmet, falls right in my hands. If you notice, I had to take a second to adjust it be like, dang, dang, I really caught this. Hit your helmet first. Yeah, I hit my helmet first. So it was definitely, definitely something I won't forget anytime soon. God bless me on that one. <laughs> three, four inches off the ground. Like, you kept your hand to make sure the ball didn't hit the ground, right? Heck yeah, I did. I knew, I knew, I, that ball fell that close to me, I knew I wasn't gonna let that thing touch the ground. Everybody else was getting interceptions and picks it. I looked like I stunk because I was the only one that didn't return it for a touchdown. PJ. Yeah, but I'm talking about, my, at that point in the game, I was the only one in my room. So, that, then I can't, now I can't make fun of everybody and say I was the only one with a touchdown this year. Which is good. It's a good, th good problem to have. This is a milestone game for you. Your 60th game. I didn't realize that until you said that. I think I told you a while back. Yeah, you, you told me a couple weeks ago that like I was, I was on pace for like. Record is 64. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right, that's not bad. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna try and beat. I'm definitely gonna beat Cal's record then. So. Talk about some of the memories of this. A lot of fun. They were all. They were all a lot of fun. Uh, each one has its own special place in my heart. Obviously, it's a bit of. It's a heck of a university, a heck of a tradition that we have here, and I'm just playing game by game, hoping to make memories in each one. Along the way, you guys have had some interesting matchups against teams that run RPOs, mm -hmm. and, and it seems like you've developed. We just talked to Randy about it, like kind of over the past three, four years maybe, like you developed and either adjusted how you defended or the players just get a better set. Are, are you just sort of familiar with it now? He said that. He said you guys just see it a lot more than maybe you did three years ago. Are you just more comfortable defending that kind of offense now? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I think it's a, a testament to our coaching staff and how they how they teach us to play ball and how they teach us an understanding of these are the holes in the defense that someone might exploit and these are the calls that we're going to make to change it up and move, move that weak point around throughout our secondary. So... Um, that's definitely has a lot to do with it, and then the the presence of mind that we have as as different as different rooms, obviously, to understand this is this is our responsibility. This is we what we have to this is what we have to uh, have to take care of. So obviously, a couple of years ago, everybody will remember Western Michigan. Like that was a big wake up call um, as far as how we need to defend the RPO, what we need to do, and, and how we need and how we need to execute in order to defend it effectively. So um, we've taken that to heart. We've taken all that teaching to heart, and really. Put it forth in the past couple of years to to really perfect what we're doing and how we defend the RPO. What does it mean? Like, I mean, you said you felt bad that you were one of the only the only linebacker that returned for a <laughs> returned for a touchdown. But I mean, what's, what's it like to see every all the linebackers? Just it seems like anything that needs to be done, you guys are everywhere flying around the field. What's it like to see you guys just execute so well this season? It's a beautiful thing. Um, seeing seeing really our entire defense run relentlessly to the football is something that's um, that we take that we take very very seriously here at the University of Pittsburgh um, knowing like knowing that defense is very much an effort based thing right the, the ability to fly to the ball run to the ball and good things are going to happen for your defense whether you're, someone's punching at the ball and the ball pops out we're, we're on it because there's 11 hats around the ball compared to the offense of seven right so that's really what we're that's what we'd love to see and that's how we trying to attack every day like our like my room especially that we love we love the game yeah you can tell you can tell the way that way that we play on every on every game day that we love what we do and we take it very seriously and that's why that's why we we've, we've been effective this year thus far absolutely yeah. that's that's what happens when you have, we have a lot of new young faces on the team um, and on, on our starting and our starting give us a lineup. So the ability to be comfortable with one another, to know that that build, to build that trust as the as the year goes on, to know that if I do this, someone else is going to do their job is very, very, very important on a defense, especially like ours, where it's, we're so aggressive that um, you need to know that your brother's in the right spot at the right time 
every time. So um, I feel like that's what's really grown and made us more, more cohesive is understanding that we're all going to do our job effectively and correctly every play. You're the green dot guy, right? I am the green dot guy. Coach Van Dyke is giving you instructions. Yeah, we're getting, uh, we're getting calls, checks, um, different uh, just down distance situations like that um, just in my, in my head. So I, obviously I have to set the front and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, more com I'm a position that requires a lot of communication. So the ability to not have to look to the sideline and the ability to be able to look forward and dissect the defense or the, dissect the offense as it's breaking the huddle or approaching the line of scrimmage um, is very, very, very helpful. You guys are all obviously right. Mm -hmm. time on Saturday. How important is that technology to getting you guys to know exactly where to line up? It's very, it's, I'm, it's being as I had, I was there before the green dot, and I know what it was like to have to look over the sideline, especially in hurry up offenses. I'm sitting there like, okay, where's the call? Where's the call? Where's the call? Where's the call? There's the call. Oh crap, they're snapping the ball. Like that, that was that was the point before the green dot. Now that the green dot's there, I don't have to look over here, look over the sideline in order to get the call. I can still I can stare straight forward. I get it in my ear and then I can effectively give everybody else the assignment or the check that we need. Would you like to evolve something we could have a conversation with the coach? There's a couple times I wish I could say something back through the uh, through the headset, but um, I'm glad Right now, I'm just I'm glad that we have what we have because it's definitely something that's very useful. And from my understanding, it's the same thing they have in the NFL. So that's a that's a very good tool for guys that are going to have the green dot, hopefully in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's a conversation. It's it's obviously a conversation uh, with the evolution of iPads on the sideline now it's a little bit easier to understand like what we're talking what we're talking about or what we may have seen like because sometimes your eyes deceive you you know you're on the field you may think it was pow it was power when really it was counter so like the understanding of this is this was a formation like you can literally see it play out in front of you like oh okay I didn't see that guard pull I only saw the tackle like seeing that coach Manilak can effectively tell us like okay this is a formation this time next time this is, this is how we're going to adjust to it so um that's one thing that it's, it is a, most definitely a conversation. It's not him sitting there just screaming at us. Like there, obviously there, there's a coach-player relationship, but sitting sitting there on the sideline, he he's been in our shoes. He understands that you may you may see like you see a little, you see a lot, you see a lot, you see a little. This is, this is a lot of, this is something we say a lot a lot of the time, which means if you're not focused on one little thing, you're going to miss the big picture in, entirely. So. You, uh, you. Jerry likes to point out how many games you've played here. It's six years. I mean, you've been, mm -hmm. been a part of this program. This is the sixth year. In terms of linebacker groups, you know what I mean, as you think back over the last five years, I mean, obviously 2021, you guys had pretty good growth with, mm -hmm. with all those guys. But, I mean, is, is this one the, the best one you've been a part of here? I think this is the best one because this is the one I'm a part of right now. Um, over the years, we've had a lot of great linebackers. We have a, we've had a lot of guys that have had their shot to play at the next level. Uh, we have guys that are currently still playing at the next level. Um, I think over the years, we've had we've had just different different styles of play. Um, this is definitely one of the more aggressive linebacker linebacker groups that you've probably seen in the past. Um, we uh, we definitely we fire we fire off the ball. We f we're coming downhill with the intent to. The intent to wreak some havoc. So that's something that's obviously very, very fun to see. Um, it's very, very, very fun to be a part of. Like our our room is always gonna is always gonna have fun. We're, we, our goal and at the end of the day, our goal is to win a football game too, though. So we're gonna be we're gonna be on each other. We're gonna make sure that hey, if you didn't do your job, this last this last play, we're gonna, the difference between a smack on the butt and a pat on the back is a few inches. So we're gonna make sure that you know you either did a good job or a bad job. And, we got to get it fixed or keep it up. So, definitely a fun crew to be a part of, though. We'll do a couple more. What does uh, SMU concern you? What are you most concerned with SMU? They're a very athletic crew. They, uh, they're obviously, I believe, they're the number one rushing offense in the ACC. Um, they're very effective at what they do. They're very effective um, getting a getting up tempo and trying to get you on your heels a little heels a little bit as as they try and move the ball down the field. Um, so we just have to prepare diligently for that and understand that we need to get home, get the call, and execute the call at a very quick tempo and a very and very effective manner consistently. And that's that's what will help us 
um, get off the field and get our offense back on the field. Um, it's hard to say, obviously, but uh, our, but it's close. I'd say it's close. They're about their tempo about 50 50 percent of the time. So it'll be it'll be a fun it'll be a fun game to watch for those that have ACC network. Sharps prior to the season. Just the way you guys have played and also seeing the fans like hold up inflatables and some people dressed as sharks. What's it like just seeing the fans like race you guys like that and just in front of the sharks on every game? It's something that I haven't been a part of until this year. So that's something that's really that's really, really neat to see. You see one of our guys gets a sack or a TFL or an interception, you look back in the student section and the entire student section's throwing up the shark sign. So like that's that's obviously something really cool to see. Our student section does a phenomenal job too. Like for, for everybody that's at the game, you know they get loud. That playing at that end of the, that end of the stadium is one that's it's hard it's hard to get a snap count off in that end of the stadium. So that's it's something that is definitely a highlight of the season, seeing all seeing all of them get into it like they are. Yeah, you guys only played like 44 plays on Thursday. You didn't, like break a sweat. You feel like you had to go home and get a workout in. Like yeah, it was definitely like you know underwhelming. You know, not getting as many plays. You know, not being as productive as, as we know we could. So it was just we got to just build from that and learn from it. You guys take a lot of energy though from when you're seeing the defense score three touchdowns. Yeah, that gave, that definitely gave us energy. A lot of energy on the sideline. We've seen a lot of runs by. Has read a couple big runs from Dan Carter, but for an offense that sort of slowed down the last couple of weeks, how do you guys sort of you know set up at the line to, to be out there for longer, to be more established on the ground than just getting those home run touchdown runs? Did you ask the question again? What? How do you guys establish more of a ground game? You know? Okay, uh, really just starts in practice. You know, just being more intense in practice. You know, finishing our blocks more. Uh, just not letting up until the whistle blows. So just being more intense in practice so it can carry on into the game. I think you and Ryan have done so far on that right side. How do you guys want to go? Yeah, I, I love uh, Barry. You know, he just, it's always great to have him right there. You know, I know what he's going to do. He knows what I'm going to do. So just the chemistry just right with us right there. So it just makes it a lot easier to play. And you guys who have been there and started from us. I mean, we just just practice with them, you know, spend time spending time out with them outside of football, you know, just always just building the bond just outside of football, you know, just keep building the bond, pretty much. Uh, he's he's uh he's done a great job in my opinion, you know, just the next man up mentality, you know, he just has to, he just he's always he stepped up and he's playing well. How do you think you've learned? What do you think you've learned so much from, I guess, the season making this is like your second year? So, what have you, how have you seen the field maybe differently than you did maybe last year? Uh, it's like from last year, you know, things have slowed down to me, and then I, I like I learned a lot from Coach Darvo just about just what people are going to do, just my eyes where to look at first. So it's just I just got more knowledge from last year, so it just slows things down and it makes it easier for me just to go out there and play. Oh yeah, definitely. When did you first get accustomed to it? Oh yeah, it's probably like after spring ball. I was like, <sighs> just got to get some extra running in, and then during the start of the season, you know, we, caught, we ran a little bit after practice just to get more acclimated to it. So, so we're good now. How do you think uh, Linda has done so far at center? Obviously, has to set the tone, set the tempo. Uh, I love he's more of like a vocal leader on the line, so I just love him. He's just always intense, you know, I just love him. He just always has that fire in him, it just gets me ready to play. What's it like, I guess, block three line, how he's done so far this season? Seems like he made a play at almost nothing. Yeah, I, I, just, I just love Baca for him, you know, he's just a great quarterback, just great guy just to lead us. Just love him. All good? Thank you. Um, I think it's been pretty good. Like, you know, we're just getting better each and every week, and that's all you can ask for. What concerns you about SMU's offense? Um, they're a great offense. You know, they like like to run the ball. You know, they think they're like one of the top run offenses in the country. So, for me, we just got to put our best foot forward. It seems like they like to run the ball outside a lot. Um, 
as, as a tackle, is that a little bit more frustrating? Because even if you win, you've got to then chase a the guy out to the hash mark. Um, it's good, but you always can get the little knockout hit when they cut back and stuff like that. So, you know, never too bad, just run to the ball. It's like having a shot next to you and back in the field. It's great. I feel like our whole D-line, like the whole D-line room is, you know, we're dogs, you feel me? So having anybody out there beside you is always a bonus. I guess outside of the North Carolina game, you played almost every game of the season. I mean, what's it been like just being a part of the D-line and seeing all you guys have seen? Um, it's good, you know, just everybody coming together. You know, after, like, I got here in with January, so it's just like, you know, everybody building a bond, so it's just, it became special. This is the first time in two years Pitt as a ranked team is playing other ranked team. Mm -hmm. We're kind of excited with that. Hey, I, I think it's great because we get to go, you know, prove who we are, you know, prove that we're a great defensive line, even though I feel like, you know, we get overlooked sometimes. The last two games with the offense slowing down, the defense has been relied upon more, especially all four quarters. How have you guys just been able to take advantage of that and you step up? Just, just trusting each other, just trusting one another, knowing they're going to do their job so you can just handle yours and everything's going to work out well. You ever played in a game like the one against Syracuse where the defense had five interceptions like that, three returns for touchdowns? Nah, I've never been a part of that. That was crazy. I've never been a part of something like that. What was it just like playing in a game like that? Just like, feel like you, like we couldn't be stopped. Like the momentum was just on our side. Like everything felt like it was just going our way. How do you guys continue that momentum? Keep working. It's the only thing. Just keep working. Keep getting better. Three percent each day. Are you uh, uh, just the eight p.m. game? I mean, you kind of got to just sort of get stir crazy sitting around all day, or how, how are you going to spend the day on Saturday? Pretty much just sitting there waiting, just watching all the other games, just waiting on our turn to get out there. It's like uh, seeing the linebackers just do what they do this season. There's some dogs. There's some dogs. I never played with some backers like that. They're dogs. And just amazing just knowing, like, you're not going to get doubled the whole time because the backers are going to shoot the gap and, you know, get them off of you. It's like seeing the uh, shark culture just take over. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Just everywhere you're just seeing everybody throw up the sharks and stuff. It's pretty nice. Anything final? Nick, thank you. For sure.